A lot of marketers completely misunderstand social media. They think that social media is free media for them. Yay, this is great. We get to put anything we want on YouTube. Yay, this is great. We get to spam people by email. We don't have to pay NBC. This is great, they think. That's not what social media is. Social media gave every human being with an internet connection, which is almost a billion of us, a media company. Everyone is now a media company. And in that world where everyone is reporting, your platform isn't worth more than theirs. It used to be if you had money, you had a million to one advantage over the consumer. Now you have a zero to one advantage. There are more of them than you. So when everyone can report, when everyone can speak up, you can't act like you're in charge. You're not. Humility becomes essential here. No longer do you have to be Coke or Pepsi or Edelman to try to reach people. Everyone is creating content and everyone has the opportunity to publish content. So how do you use social media to unlock social good? How do you bring crowds, how do you bring different groups of people to your interests, to your causes, without having to knock on the door like the Girl Scouts used to have to do? It's amazing, and a couple clicks, if you're good at what you do, you can bring the masses along with you. Also, companies can actually now be part of a conversation that they could never be part of before. The social environment that's now been exposed, especially with digital, allows them to understand what's being said about a brand, a product, a service, a trend, to learn what's important uh, to their customers. And being part of that conversation is very important in marketing because if you're not, somebody else, most likely your competitors, will, and they'll do it better than you are. The analogy I like to use, we stay in front of technology all technology. And this is communication and social technology. We want to be on the forefront. So we have gained the reputation, our company, as being the leader in social media in our business, which then gives us opportunities to have um, publishers come and say, tell us about your latest products, your latest trends, how do you see the industry evolving? And this, as thought leadership says, wow, we're talking to people in a whole new way, and it can make our competitors jealous. <laughs> I've always said that social media and the internet, digital marketing, is not an area where if you build it, they will come. You have to build it, you have to promote the hell out of it, and then a few people will come, and if then the, then the content is good, then they will tell their networks and you will get that sort of viral sort of lift. But that promoting the heck out of it and getting people there often involves offline advertising, word of mouth, direct mail, lots of other traditional channels that some social media consultants and whatnot would say are not worth your time or, or money. I disagree. We used to pull together people in focus groups and labs and ask them questions. And now um, you can listen to what people are saying online. You can create digital focus groups. Um, in some cases on Facebook, in other cases using different digital tools. Um, you can eavesdrop on people when they're just living their everyday lives. So you can learn a lot about that. You can get insights that can help really you know, um, influence your, your business decisions. We've seen a real shift in social media to what's visual. So video, pictures, that is what's driving engagement in social today. Social is really about dynamic interactions between brands and their stakeholders and the relationships that they have. And in many ways, because we're living in a kind of a fractured world now, those brands are really dependent on their outside stakeholders carrying the word. So to me, it's got to be a much deeper relationship. Uh, some people call that community management. I don't necessarily think you have to have a great community manager, but I do think you have to empower people to be loyal brand ambassadors, to let them own the brand, let them communicate for you, and your brand has to be very simple to do that. So social turns into a, what I would say, just generally in a nutshell, it, it just turns into an empowerment strategy for brands. It's the new digital, right? The way that digital disrupted and created new opportunities and new business models you know, 15 years ago is sort of the same thing that's happening now with social. Um, and to some degree mobile as well. Um, and I think what's really interesting is that social and, mo and mobile are kind of conspiring to, um, uh, to create new opportunities and disrupt as well.